Well, shalom and Boker Tov. Good morning to everyone. This is August Rosado with Today in Bible Prophecy Ministries coming to you live from Lincoln, Rhode Island. Today is November 9th, 2017. And it seems like winter is beginning to make its mark a little bit, even though it's not officially winter. Uh, yet it seems that it's making its mark a little bit here, especially tomorrow on Friday, where it's going to get down into the 30s. Now, we're talking a high during the day, about 30. So you can imagine what it's going to feel like that night. And so we were getting a little bit spoiled with all of this warm weather for the whole month of October and at least the first week or so of um, November. And now things are beginning to turn a little bit. Hey, what do you expect? It is New England, right? So... But uh, that's how it is, and that's how the weather rolls here in New England. And we see people are coming into our room, like Debbie Smith, uh, Monique Brito, uh, Brother Tony Wood. Good to see Brother Tony Wood here uh, in the house. It's been a while since uh, I've seen Brother Tony Wood. I believe he is out there in Alabama, pastors a church out there. And Brother Tony would love to come on back down there sometime and preach for you and your people. And uh, good to have you in the room with us today. Hopefully this is the same Tony Wood. <laughs> And so I know that can be a little bit of a common name there. Uh, Christy Montenegro, uh, she's been following our ministry for years, and she's based out of Seattle, Washington. Great to see uh, uh, Christy with us, Lynn Spears. And um, uh, Debbie Smith says, good morning. It's chilly here in Maine. Well, you guys get winter before we do, uh, Debbie. And so, yeah, Maine can get extremely brutal uh, out there because you guys are further north than we are, but nonetheless, it's still New England. <clears throat> but uh, Debbie, good to have you with us. And Jason Impson, good to see Brother uh, Jason in the house. Uh, Jason and uh, his wife are out there in Louisiana, and they're missionaries to Australia. So great to see uh, Brother Jason with us. Uh, Leanne uh, Bishop, uh, Jesse Smith is uh, with us. And so great to have all of you in the room. And of course, I'm going to be looking at the geopolitical situation that is going on between three Arab states, one of them, of course, being Islamic, but three Arab states. The geopolitical situation between these three states right now. Now, we're talking about major players in Bible prophecy. Now, I'm going to be talking about those three major players in Bible prophecy, where there is right now political turmoil uh, within these, between these three Arab states. And uh, two of those Arab states have declared war. And we're going to see how the geopolitical activities between these three Arab states is sowing the seeds for what we're going to look at in Ezekiel 38 and Psalm 83. So, you're going to want to get your Bible out, and you might want to get a pen and paper out, and take down notes, or later on go back to the archive of this live video, and go over it again to give you a better understanding as to why we look at the political, because the political is set on the stage for the prophetic to be fulfilled. Now, before we begin, I'm excited to share with all of you today that I just finished my new book called Bible Eschatology, looking at political events in light of biblical prophecy is the subtitle. So we're just putting the finishing touches on the title of my new book, and then today, it goes to the printers. So I am excited about this new book. I believe this is probably the fourth book that I have written. And I'm really excited about this book, Bible Eschatology. Eschatology simply means the doctrine of last things, or in other words, what is going to happen in the future? What is going to happen in the end times? And so what I do in this book, is, as I'm going to do today on today's program, is that I look 
at geopolitical events, and then I give a prophetic perspective on those geopolitical events. The book is going to run uh, $15, and once we get those books, it will be available. But you can also do pre-orders for the book, Bible Eschatology. So if you, Christmas it will be here before you know it. So if you want an autographed copy of this book, then you can send us your pre-orders right now by going to my website at todayinbibleprophecy.org. Now, the book is not in the store as of yet, but you can still pre-order the book on the website. And all you simply have to do is scroll down to the bottom of our webpage, todayinbibleprophecy.org, click the PayPal button, and then just put in the box Bible and you know, you don't have to write eschatology. I know it's a fancy long word, but just put Bible prophecy book. Bible prophecy book. And then uh, $15 and then $3 shipping and handling. We will make sure that we get that book out to you. And you will have it before Christmas. So again, I'm excited about my new book, Bible eschatology looking at geopolitical events in light of biblical prophecy so i'm excited about this book and uh we're sending it out to the printers uh the publishers today and we're hoping at least by the end of november those books uh will be ready and those of you that order we will make sure that we ship them out to you so again excited about my new book bible eschatology. So I hope and pray that today that you would put your order in. So great to see uh, Gregory Amaker, Mark Guy. Good morning to you, brother. Jeanette Eplin is also in the room. Great to see Jeanette uh, with us today. Gloria uh, Lang is with us again. For all of you that are coming into the room, I was just talking about our new book, Bible Eschatology. I just got done uh, writing this book, and it's going off to the publishers today. We'd love to have you get a copy of this new book. I hope and pray that it will be a blessing to you. And while you're there on my website, you can sign up for my newsletters. We've got one going on tomorrow through email. And uh, also, if you would like to have a postal newsletter that goes out uh, to you, then let me know that you would want a postal version of our newsletter. And all you got to do is just contact me through Facebook Messenger. Don't put your address publicly on you know, Facebook or, or in the comment box. Uh, go to the private chat, Facebook Messenger, and uh, just give me your address. And uh, just say, August, I'm interested in receiving your postal newsletter. We will make sure that we send it out to you. And so you can do that, navigate around my website, look at my speaking schedule to see if I'll be at a church near you. Because this weekend, uh, Patty and I are flying off to Mississippi, where I'm going to be preaching a six-day Bible prophecy conference at Grace Baptist Church in Parkerville, Mississippi. Greg Wells is the pastor. The following Sunday, I'll be preaching at Red Creek Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, uh, Brother um, Scotty Rayburn is the pastor in Wiggins, Mississippi. We'll be there with them all day Sunday. And then we'll fly off to Indiana to spend Thanksgiving with our daughter. And then from there, we'll go over to Portage, Indiana, where I will be with Brother Lonnie Lawson and all of his fine people there. At Light of Life Worship Center. This is a strong Bible believing church. This is a, a, a strong pro Israel church. I mean, they love Bible prophecy. They love Israel. They love the Jewish people. They have a little mini Western Wall, a Kotel in Hebrew, or the Whalen Wall, uh, there inside of their church. And they support us on a monthly basis. 
And so we appreciate them. And we are looking forward to being with all of them. So again, go to my website, check out my speaking schedule to see if I'll be at a church near you. If you're a pastor of a church and you are interested in having us come to your church to talk about Israel, Bible prophecy, and current events, again, contact me through Facebook Messenger or um, my email, august.todayinbibleprophecy at gmail.com or through my website through the contact form, todayinbibleprophecy.org. And so I'll have more to say about my brand new book, Bible Eschatology. And the subtitle, look at looking at geopolitical events in light of biblical prophecy. So the books go to the publishers today. If you want a copy of that book, put your order in today by going to my website, todayinbibleprophecy.org. Scroll down to the bottom of the page. And I hit the PayPal button, just put Bible Prophecy Book. That's all you need to put. Bible Prophecy Book, $15 plus $3 shipping and handling. We will make sure the book is on its way to you. So we are taking pre-orders for the book, and I will make sure that I will personally autograph that book for you. Uh, Chris, uh, let me see. Sue says, uh, oops, didn't mean to touch the sad face. Sue, I know you're never sad. You're always happy in the Lord. Christy Montenegro says, August, I just went to your store, and the book is not there to pre-order. No, remember what I said, Christy. The book is not in the store yet, but you can still order it. You've got to scroll down to the bottom of the page, my website, see where the PayPal button is. Hit the PayPal button, and then type in the box, Bible Prophecy Book. That's all you need to do. Bible Prophecy prophecy book because it's not in the store yet uh, because it hasn't gone to the publishers yet so scroll down to the bottom of the page hit the paypal button and just put in there bible prophecy book and then put the price fifteen dollars plus three dollars shipping and handling and we will make sure christy that the book goes out to you i am really really excited about this book. You know, all of my notes that I've preached over the years, you know, I now will put them into book form. And so that way, uh, you know, you can see exactly what I'm talking about, what I'm preaching about, and what we talk about, uh, geopolitical activities in light of Bible prophecy. So, Christy, that's how you do it. So, don't go to the bookstore because it's not there, but go to the bottom of the webpage, hit the PayPal button, and put the information in there. Great to see Zeke Garza uh, with us. And uh, Chrissy says, I think I need to use a different search engine because the PayPal button is not there either. It should be at the very bottom of my page, Christy. And so, you know, sometimes certain search engines like, uh, uh, what is it, um, Explorer, Chrome, or uh, Mozilla, Whatever, sometimes if you use certain search engines, you know, certain things don't appear. Why? I, I don't know. And so, you know, for example, if I want to uh, update my website, I can't do it using Google Chrome. And I use Google Chrome. So what, what I got to do, and there's one thing you might be able to do, Christy, is go uh, incognito. You go to the very uh, top right corner of your um your search page there and you see that like three or i think it's like three or four dots and there are three dots and uh, hit that and uh that's in the upper right corner and you will see new tab new window new incognito window so when i hit the uh the new incognito uh window then I could go to my website and I can update it. But I can't do it if I'm using Google Chrome or Internet Explorer or um, Mozilla or whatever um, that you're using. So you might want to try doing that. Uh, Christy, go to the right top corner of your um, computer. See the three dots there? And uh, hit that and hit new incognito window. That might be able to help you. Sometimes the Internet can be weird. I don't know. 
And so um, hopefully, guys, you'll order my new book. I'm really excited about this uh, new book, and I'm going to be sending it out to the printers today, and I hope and pray that this book would be a blessing to you. And so, um, guys, uh, we're looking to put together a Bible prophecy tour to Israel next year in the spring of 2018. If you would like to come with us to Israel, now is the time to make preparations to do that. We're probably looking at late May of 2018. And because my wife and I will be in Israel in March for our Israel Bible, uh, our Israel outreach, I should say, Israel missions outreach, which we go there, share the gospel with the Jewish people, and pass out Bibles. And so we're looking to do the prophecy tour uh, late uh, April 2018. If you would like to come to Israel, with us, you're, you're welcome, Christy. If you'd like to come to Israel uh, with us, then now would be the time to make the preparations to do exactly that. I know that we'll be um, in Ohio in April. I'll be preaching at two churches in Ohio, and then hopefully we'll get this Israel prophecy trip off the ground, looking to take between 15 and uh, 20 people uh, to come with us to Israel. So pray about it, and pray that the Lord will provide the finances, because it's not just Israel, but also Petra in southern Jordan. So you get two countries for the price of one. And again, guys, if our ministry has been a blessing to you, and you appreciate the clear teaching of Bible prophecy, you don't get, uh, you don't get drama, hype, or sensationalism with us. You only get the plain sense interpretation of the Word of God. And that's what we've been doing for those of you who've been following us for months or maybe years for that matter. You never get drama, hype, or sensationalism. You only get the plain sense teaching of God's Word, just like you're going to get today. And so we would appreciate your prayers, and we would appreciate your financial support. There are those of you who support us at $20 a month, others periodically, or a one-time gift. And it's never too, there's never, never a gift too big or too small. So please pray about supporting our ministry. And again, you can do that by going to the bottom of our page, todayinbibleprophecy.org. See the PayPal button there? Hit the PayPal button and uh, put your support in there. You can also mail your support to Today in Bible Prophecy Ministries, 55 Pleasant Street, Apartment 2, Lincoln, Rhode Island, 02865. If you want to order my brand new book, Bible Eschatology, looking at geopolitical events in light of biblical prophecy. Uh, if you don't use PayPal, or you have issues using PayPal, or you don't use credit card, then you can mail your order for my new book, Bible Eschatology. Again, to the same address. Today in Bible Prophecy Ministries, 55 Pleasant Street, Apartment 2, Lincoln, Rhode Island, 02865. You can make a check or money order out for the book, and just make sure you put in there Bible Eschatology book, or just Bible Prophecy book. $15 plus $3 shipping and handling, and I'll make sure I autograph that book for you, and... We will send it out to you. We have uh, Ramon Luis Ayala in with us. Thank you, uh, Ramon, for joining us. And our dear friend, Shelly Booten. Shelly, I have those matchbox from Israel. I picked up in Israel for uh, Vic. And I, I believe Nicole's going to be coming over our house, I guess, tomorrow. Or today, rather. She's coming over our house today. And uh, I'll make sure, Shelly, that I give that matchbox to Nicole to give to uh, Vic. We thought we were going to be heading down to New Bedford. That didn't work out. And I should have called Vic. I haven't. But uh, I'll give it to Nicole and make sure Nicole gives it to uh, your husband. So Dennis Higgins Sr. is uh, with us. Great to see him. And listen, if you have a Bible prophecy question concerning today's topic, the geopolitical conflict between Persia, uh, Dayton, and Tyre, Precursor to the Bible prophecy. 
If you have a comment or a Bible prophecy question concerning this subject, type it in there and we will get to it. What I'd like you to do is take your Bible and go with me look at one verse. Ezekiel 38 and verse number 13. Ezekiel 38 and verse number 13 says this. Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish with all the young lines thereof shall say unto thee, Art thou come to take a spoil? Hast thou gathered thy company to take a prey? To carry away silver and gold? To take away cattle and goods? To take a great spoil? So it tells us here that when Gog, who's the personality, and Magog, the location where this personality comes from, located north of the state of Israel, will lead an Islamic confederacy of nations to attack the Jewish state of Israel. And when this happens, the Bible says in verse 13 that Sheba and Dedan will speak out against this attack. Tarshish and the young lions will also speak out against this attack. Now, a lot of these Bible prophecy sensationalists go way off the deep end and try to apply verse 13 to some other nation out there, whether it's Britain, the United States of America. Geographically, that is not the case. Geographically, this isn't talking about America. This isn't talking about Britain or any other nation that's out there. It's only talking about one nation. Biblical geography helps us to locate where these nations are today. And so this particular Arab nation uh, will indeed speak up against this attack. Ezekiel lays out a scenario of Arab nations who will come against Israel. Speaks out against this attack. Sheba and Dedan. Now, like I said, folks, a geography helps us to know the location or the locations of these nations. Now, when Russia, and I believe that's who Gog and Magog is, when Russia leads an attack on Israel, they will be followed in Ezekiel 38 and verse number 2. Gog, as I said, is a person. And to be honest with you folks, I wouldn't be surprised. I can't be dogmatic, but I wouldn't be surprised if Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, is that Gog. Given that he's the sugar daddy of the Arab world today, and Russia has a major foothold in the Middle East today, Actually, they're right on Israel's borders, uh, on the Golan Heights. Well, not in the Golan Heights, but right on the border of the Golan Heights. The Golan Heights serves as a buffer zone between Israel and Syria on their northeast border. Russia has a foothold in Syria. Iran has a foothold in Syria. Hezbollah has a foothold in Syria. So when Russia leads an attack on Israel, they will be followed by Meshach, Tubal, Gomer, and Togomer. Well, that would be today the Islamic State of Turkey and their radical Islamic president, Tayyip Erdogan. So Russia will be followed by Turkey, Persia, which would be Iran, Ethiopia, consisting of Sudan and Somalia, Ezekiel 38, 5, and Libya. Ezekiel 38.5. There will be an all-out attack on the Jewish state of Israel coming from the north, Russia and Turkey, from the south, Ethiopia, Sudan, Somalia, from the east, Iran, from the west, Libya. North, south, east, and west. But based on Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse number 8, this attack will happen 
in the latter years. Now, now we see that in Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse number 8 where it says, After many days thou shalt be visited in the latter years. Thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword and is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste, but it is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. So it's going to happen in the latter years. This is way after the Jewish people were gathered out of all nations and brought back into the land. Now that's been going on since 1897 with the first Zionist Congress in Basel, Switzerland. With the uh, father of modern-day Zionism, Theodore Herzl, who said the Jewish people need their own homeland. Seeing all the persecution going on in Europe against the Jewish people, after covering the Dreyfus affair, seeing that General Dreyfus, who was a, uh, a, a colonel, I, I believe, in the French army, was uh, accused of espionage and was sentenced to Devil's Island. Later on, it was shown that the uh, charges were false. And Theodore Herzl said, it's time that our people have their own homeland. He got the ball rolling on that in Basel, Switzerland in 1897. And since 1897, Jews have been making Aliyah back to the land of Israel, leading up to the rebirth of the state of Israel, May the 14th of 1948. And even since then, Jews from all over, the, all over the world continue to make Aliyah back to the land of Israel. But Ezekiel says that this attack will happen in the latter years. That's another a, a way of saying the end times. They will attack Israel when they let their guard down, as we see again uh, in verse 8, the last sentence. And they shall dwell safely, all of them. They will attack when they let their guard down, when Israel lets their guard down. Verse 11 says, these Arab nations, along with Russia, will attack when Israel is dwelling in unwalled villages. It says in verse 11, and thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them, the Jews, that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls, having neither bars nor gates. Well, you know, folks, that's not the case now. Israel has those walls up. They're not really dwelling safely right now because they live in a very rough neighborhood. So they have to have their guard up. They have to have those walls up. But sometime after the rapture of the church, when the Antichrist confirms a seven-year peace deal with Israel out of Daniel 9, 27, then Israel will let their guard down. Those walls will come down. They will dwell in unwalled villages. Then they will be dwelling in safety because of the seven-year confirmation peace treaty from the European ruler of the revived Roman Empire. We also see in uh, Ezekiel 38, 14, where it says, Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say unto God, Thus saith the Lord God, In that day when my people of Israel dwelleth safely, thou shalt know it. So when they're dwelling safely, and let their guard down, that's when Russia and her Arab allies say, let's attack. Well, that shouldn't surprise us, because do you remember in 1973, during the Yom Kippur War, when Israel let their guard down? If Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement in Leviticus 23, is the holiest day on the Jewish calendar, in which the nation just shuts down, man. I mean, it's a solemn day in Israel. Everything shuts down. And even though the military, you know, was on alert, they let their guard down because of Yom Kippur. And that's when Syria to the northeast, Jordan, east of the Jordan River, Egypt, south 
of Israel said, time to attack. Let's attack them on their holiest calendar. And that's exactly what they did. And at first, they gave Israel a black eye because Israel was caught off guard. They let their guard down. But Israel regrouped, their military regrouped, and drove the Syrians all the way back to Damascus, drove the Jordanians back over the Jordan River, and drove the Egyptians all the way back to Cairo. When the Antichrist confirms that seven-year peace deal out of Daniel 9, 27, Israel will let their guard down once again. And then once again, they will be attacked this time by Russia and her Arab neighbors. Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse 12 says, The attacking come to take a spoil and a prey. Now, looking at verse number 12 of Ezekiel 38, again, if you have your Bibles, please go along with me. Ezekiel 38, 12 says, The purpose of these armies, to take a spoil and to take a prey, to turn thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited, and upon the people that are gathered, gathered out of the nations, that would be the Jewish people, which have gotten cattle and goods that dwelleth in the midst of the land. So what's the purpose of this invading armies? To take a spoil and to take a prey. I believe this means the non-Arab nation, in this case Russia, will come to take a spoil. The Arabs, on the other hand, will come to take a prey because they want the annihilation of the state of Israel. They don't want a Jewish state in the Middle East called the state of Israel. Russia, they have always coveted the rich minerals of the Dead Sea. They have wanted that in such the worst way, but they could never get their hands on it. When they attack, they're coming to take a spoil, but the Arabs are coming to take a prey. They want to pray on the Jewish people to wipe them out, to annihilate them, to destroy them. The leader of this Arab invasion is on Israel is none other than Russia. Gog, G-O-G, -G, he's a person. Magog, the location north of Israel where this personality, Gog, comes from. He is known as the chief prince. Now, chief in Hebrew is Rosh, R-O-S-H. I know many try to interpret that as saying Rosh would be Rasha or Rasha. Even though I believe it's Russia, I don't believe Rosh is referring to modern-day Rasha. Rosh is just a Hebrew word that means chief or head. And even though we do believe it's Russia, Rosh, who is the leader, the chief prince, Russia, will lead this uh, Arab confederacy. He is the head or leader of this attack. Ezekiel 38, 15 says, he comes from the north. Again, looking at Ezekiel 38, 15. Thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts. Thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses, and a great company, and a mighty army. So he comes from the north. The literal Hebrew there means the far north. The north part in Ezekiel 38, 15 means the far north. God, the personality, comes from Magog. That's the land. That's the location. Ezekiel 38, 15 says it's far north of the state of Israel. Now, in order to understand these people that will play a major role in the latter times, in the end times, in order to understand what's going to happen in the end, you got to go back to the beginning. What information do we have 
on Magog. What information do we have concerning his brothers? Where did they come from? Well, we know Magog was the son of Japheth. Japheth was, was the son of Noah. Magog was the son of Japheth, along with his brothers, Meshach, Tubal, and Gomer. So Magog, Meshach, Tubal, and Gomer. Those guys were the sons of Japheth. But Gomer also had a son. His name is Togomer. So we find this based on Genesis chapter 10, verses 1 through 3. That passage, ladies and gentlemen, gives us information um, concerning these four boys. Now, Magog departed from his brothers and settled north of the Caspian and Black Seas today. Even the Jewish historian Josephus Flavius tells us that Magog settled north of the Black Seas. Now, what country today, folks, is located north of the Caspian and Black Sea, north of Israel? Obviously, you don't need a PhD to figure this out. Russia settles north of the Caspian and Black Sea. So, but what about uh, Meshach, Tubal, Gomer, and Togomer? Where did those guys settle? Well, folks, they settled south of the Caspian and Black Sea. That is where today the Islamic State of Turkey is located. So Genesis 10, 1 through 3 gives us the location. But when we read in the latter times, Ezekiel 38, verse number 2, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the person, the land of Magog, the location, the chief prince of Meshach, Tubal, prophesy against them. Then in verse 6, Gomer and all his bands, the house of Togarma, of the north quarters and all his bands, and many people with thee. I saw in Israel a replica of an ancient Turkish map. And that ancient Turkish map showed Meshach, Tubal, Gomer, Togomer. Those boys make up what is today, south of the Caspian and Black Sea, the Islamic State of Turkey. Watch out for some of these prophecy teachers out there today that would give a misinterpretation and say Gomer is Germany. Because Gomer sounds like Germany. It's not Germany. Um, Meshach is uh, Moscow. Tubal is Tobolsk. you, you got to watch over some of these guys because they go way off the deep end. Don't try to interpret a name because it might sound like something modern today. You've got to look at biblical geography. Biblical geography gives us the location as to where these nations are located today. You go to Genesis chapter 10, talking about the table of nations, and you can see Japheth's boys there. Uh, Magog, north of the Caspian and Black Sea, that's where Russia is today. Meshach, Tubal, Gomer, Togomer, south of the Caspian and Black Sea, that is where Turkey is today. When you take the Bible for its plain sense interpretation, looking at it geographically, you know where these people are located today. These nations will come upon Israel in the latter days. I direct your attention to Ezekiel uh, 38 and verse number 16. And thou shalt come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days. And I will bring thee against my land, that will be Israel, that the heathen, the goyim, the Gentiles, may know me, when I shall be sanctified in thee, O Gog, before their eyes. God is sending a personal message to Gog, the person. When you come up against my people, you will 
be destroyed. This, again, is another term for the end times, latter days, the end times, and probably happened early in the first half of the tribulation period. This uh, pictures, or this is pictured, I should say, in the opening of the seal judgment in Revelation chapter number 6. The opening of the second seal in Revelation chapter 6 and verse number 4 shows the rider on the red horse who represents war. He represents global conflict. He brings lack of peace. The sword shows armed conflict. Perhaps the attack mentioned on Israel in Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse 39 as well as Daniel 11, 40 through 45. Now, Revelation chapter 6 is parallel with Jesus' all of that discourse. Jesus describes this armed conflict in his all of that discourse in Matthew 24, verses 6 and 7. Matthew 24 Verses 6 and 7 is parallel with Revelation chapter 6 and verse number 2. What we are doing this morning is that we are applying inductive Bible study. In other words, with inductive Bible study, ladies and gentlemen, you compare Scripture with Scripture. That's what you do. You compare Scripture with Scripture. You do that to ascertain more information concerning a certain text. So we are applying inductive Bible study here. We are comparing Scripture with Scripture, parallel passages in order to ascertain more information. When you read Matthew verses 6 and 7, the Word of God tells us this. Jesus says, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in divers places. Now, Matthew 24 deals with the tribulation period. Not what's going on right now in the church age, but in the tribulation period. Matthew 24 deals with the tribulation. Matthew 25 deals with the kingdom to come. So Matthew 24 is parallel to Revelation chapter number 6. Jesus describes wars and rumors of wars. In verse 7, he describes nation rising against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. That's going to happen in the tribulation period. Jesus sees in advance the seals of Revelation 6. Why wouldn't he? He's God. He can see into the future. And by the way, he's the one that opens the sealed judgments in Revelation 6, verses 1 and 2. John said, I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals. And I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. One of the four beasts saying, come and see. Jesus opens the seal judgment to pour out the wrath of God upon the earth. The opening of the seal judgment results in one-fourth of humanity perishing. One and a half billion with a B. One and a half billion people. That's Revelation chapter 6 and verse number 8. When Russia and her Arab allies come up against the state of Israel. When Russia and her Arab allies attack Israel, one Arab nation, at first anyway, will speak out against this invasion at the first. And who is it? Well, again, Ezekiel 38 and verse number um, 13. Ezekiel 38, 13. Sheba and Dedan, and the merchants of Tarshish, 
with all the young lions there shall say unto thee, Art thou come to take a spoil? Hast thou gathered thy company to take a prey, to carry away silver and gold, to take away cattle and goods, to take away a spoil? It's like, hey guys, what do you think you're doing? Why are you even doing this? Sheba and Dedan. We know who that is today. Tarshish, we also know who that is today. Tarshish is located in southern Spain. Some, again, with fancy eschatological imaginations. We say, oh, Tarshish, that's referring the young lions to the United States of America. Sheba, indeed, and that's referring to Great Britain. Or I heard one guy say that's referring to Australia. Give me a break. Again, I always look at secular geography, and I look at these nations and secular geography and biblical geography, which is more important, of course, to show where these nations are today. Tarshish, that's where Jonah went to flee from the presence of the Lord from Joppa. I always take my tour groups to Joppa and show the direction where Jonah would have fled going north from Joppa to Tarshish. Tarshish is located today in southern Spain. That's where he was going, southern Spain. Instead, God had him go in a di different direction to the east to Nineveh. Where is Nineveh today? Again, geography plays a role here, folks. Watch out for these YouTube sensationalists out there. Uh, uh, Nineveh today is modern-day Mosul. Look what's going on in modern-day Mosul today. Modern-day Mosul is in northern Iraq. As a matter of fact, ISIS had a foothold there in northern Iraq, in Mosul. They destroyed, ISIS destroyed the traditional tomb of Jonah, right there in Mosul, biblical Nineveh. So Jonah was on his way to southern Spain. Tarshish, God, as you know the story in the book of Jonah, had other plans, turned his course to the east, northeast rather, to go to Mosul, biblical Nineveh, where his tomb was there before it was destroyed by ISIS. So when Russia and her Arab allies attack Israel, one Arab nation will speak out, and that will be Sheba and Dedan. Who is that today? I've done my homework on this. This is the area known today. They were known in biblical times as Arabia. But today, they're called Saudi Arabia. Sheba and Dedan. Saudi Arabia. Arabia. Saudi Arabia, at first anyway, will speak up against this attack. By the way, where did the Saudis come from? Who are so the Saudi Arabians descendant of today? The Saudis are descendants of Ishmael, Abraham's son. God said to Ishmael that he would father only one nation. Now that's out of Genesis chapter 17 and verse number 20. God said Ishmael would be the father of only one nation. That's it. You know, Abraham told God, oh, that Ishmael might live before you. God said, Abraham, I hear you, man. I understand where you're coming from. I'm only going to make Ishmael a father of one nation. Again, read it for yourself. Genesis 17, 20. You will father only one nation. Then we read in Genesis 25, verse number 18, that Ishmael and his 12 boys, 12 princes would come out of him. His 12 boys would dwell from Havilah, which goeth down to shore, S-H-U-R, shore. Again, those are areas in Saudi Arabia. That's the reason why Muhammad is buried in Saudi Arabia. That's the reason why once a year, Muslims by the millions from all over the world 
make the Hajj pilgrimage to Mecca because that's where Muhammad is buried. And Muhammad in the 7th century AD said, I am the closest descendant to Ishmael. And that's the reason why he's buried in Mecca. In Islam, the most holiest place to the Muslims is Mecca. The second holiest place to Muslims is Medina. Mecca and Medina are located in Saudi Arabia. And the third holiest place to the Muslims is, you guessed it, Jerusalem. It, Jerusalem is the third holiest site in Islam. Not the first, not the second, the third holiest site in Islam. But to the Jews, Jerusalem is Umarun Uno. Umaro Uno. It's the number one holiest place to the Jews. When Jews pray, no matter where they are in the world, they always pray face in Jerusalem. Case in point, the Jewish prophet Daniel, Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. His windows being open, prayed toward Jerusalem. And Daniel was in Babylon at that time. Depending upon which way you were going, you know, if you were to get from Jerusalem to Babylon, if you were to cross the desert, it would only be a 500-mile trek. But because there's no water in the desert, there's no vegetation in the desert, then you would make the trek 1,500 miles, going from Jerusalem all the way up north to Haran, which would be the area of Turkey and Syria. Then you would drop down north to uh, Babylon. But in either case, Daniel had his windows open, praying toward Jerusalem. So Mecca is where Muhammad is buried. Mecca is where they believe today Ishmael is buried. So Ishmael would father only one nation, not all the Arab nations. All the Arab nations did not descend from Ishmael. That's not even biblical. When you read Genesis chapter 10 and verse number 6, it talks about Cush, Mitzrayim, and Put. Genesis 10, 6. Who is Cush, Mitzrayim, and Put? In Bible times, we can identify who those nations are today. Cush is modern-day Ethiopia, Sudan, Somalia. Mitzrayim, well, that's Hebrew. You're talking Hebrew when you say Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim is Hebrew for Egypt. And Put, some spell it P-U-T or P-H-U-T, Put is modern-day Libya. You have three Arab nations mentioned in Genesis chapter 10, verse 6. And ladies and gentlemen, Ishmael isn't born until Genesis chapter 16. We're talking 500 years after Genesis chapter 10, verse 6. 252 years after Abraham was born. 500 years after Ishmael was born. So Ishmael did not father the Arab world. Turkey. Turkey's, Turkey is an Islamic state. They don't come from Ishmael. They come from Japheth's boys, Meshach, Tubal, Gomer, and Togama. Not from Ishmael, but Turkey is an Islamic state. What about Jordan? Jordan is an Arab country east of the Jordan River. They don't come from Ishmael. Two-thirds of Jordan come from Lot. The lower one-third come from Esau. Remember Genesis 19, 37 and 38. After God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot had sex with his two daughters. Two illegitimate kids were born. Ben-Ami and Moab. Or as they say in Hebrew, Moab with a B on the end. It's a victim, Moab. Well, Ammon dwelt in what is northern Jordan today. Moab, central Jordan, and then when Esau departed from his brother Jacob, he dwelt in southern Jordan in Edom, Petra today. Edom, lower one-third of Jordan. So two-thirds of Jordan come from Lot, one-third come from Esau, not from Ishmael. I think you get the point. <laughs> not all the Arab nations come from Ishmael. He would only father one nation, Genesis 17, 20, Genesis 25, 18. That would be today. Saudi Arabia. It's Saudi Arabia 
Sheba and Dedan that will speak up against Russia and our Arab allies when they come to attack Israel. Ezekiel 38, 13 says Saudi Arabia at, at first anyway will speak out against this attack. The Russians come for a spoil because they want the mineral rich area of the Dead Sea. They always wanted it. Russia has been licking their chops in the area of the Dead Sea. But the Arabs come for a prey. They want to kill. They want to destroy. They want to eliminate. They want to annihilate the Jewish state of Israel. Iran and Islamic State wants Israel eliminated. Ezekiel 38.5. Ethiopia, along with Sudan and Somalia, which have no diplomatic ties with Israel whatsoever, all ruled by Islamic Sharia law. No diplomatic ties with Israel. Wants to see them eliminated. Libya, which also has no diplomatic ties with Israel. They all want to see Israel wiped out, yet they're mentioned in Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse number 5. We know in 1936 that Persia changed their name to Iran. You know what Iran means, ladies and gentlemen? You want to know what it means? Land of the Aryans. And they changed their name because during the reign of Adolf Hitler, you had Nazis who visited Persia at that time and convinced the Persians, you need to change the name from Persia to Iran, land of the Aryans. What was the goal of Adolf Hitler? To have a pure Aryan race, free of minorities, but especially free from Jews. Saudi Arabia recently declared uh, that another Arab nation, Lebanon, Lebanon declared war on the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Iran has a proxy in southern Lebanon. They're called Hezbollah. Hezbollah is located in southern Lebanon. Lebanon has been thrust in the center of this conflict between Saudi Arabia and Iran. Now, Lebanon is known in Bible times as Tyre, Sidon, and Gibal. They go by three in the Bible. Actually, you can refer to Lebanon as Greater Iran. Since Iran has supplied Hezbollah the missiles to fire at Israel. You remember? Israel and Hezbollah went to war for about 34 days in 2006. Iran supplies Hezbollah the weapons and the training to fight against Israel. Hezbollah is both a military and a political organization of Iran that is represented in the Lebanese parliament. Lebanon supports Hezbollah, and Lebanon and the Lebanese government are being run by Iran. Hezbollah is a powerful guerrilla army, widely seen as stronger than the Lebanese army itself, and has played a major role in the war in neighboring Syria. I told you, Russia's over there in Syria right now protecting Bashar al-Assad, keeping him in power despite over 500,000 of Assad's own people dead over this war. Russia's over there, Iran's over there, Hezbollah's over there, even China is over there. China will play a major role in Bible prophecy, but that's another story down the road. They're all over there in neighboring Syria, right on Israel's border. The reason of the rift between Iran and Saudi Arabia is because the Iranian government accuses Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, Riyadh is the capital of Saudi Arabia, 
accusing Riyadh of secret cooperation with the Israeli government. Now, in the Arab world, if it's found out that you're cooperating with Israel, then you are also the enemy, whether you're an Arab country or not. You remember what happened to Anwar Sadat in 1979, the president of Egypt, when he made peace with Israel after the 1973 Yom Kippur War? He even went to Jerusalem and spoke at the Knesset. When he got back to Egypt, Anwar Sadat, the president of Egypt, was assassinated by his own military during a military parade there in Cairo. You know why? Anwar Sadat committed the unpardonable sin in the Arab world. You don't cooperate and you certainly don't make peace with the Jews. Iran is accused in Saudi Arabia of secretly cooperating with the Israeli government. As a matter of fact, it's no secret. The Saudis gave Israel the green light to fly over Saudi Arabian airspace in, you know, if Israel decides to attack Iran's nuclear program, the Saudis gave Israel the green light to use their airspace. This is the reason why there is a serious rift between Iran and Saudi Arabia. Iran has been arming the Houthi rebels. And these Houthi rebels, in turn, fired a missile over the Riyadh Saudi Arabian airport in which Saudi Arabia said was an act of war. Not on the Houthi rebels, but on Iran, because Iran is supplying the Houthi rebels just like Iran is supplying Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. So we have Lebanon saying they're declaring war on Saudi Arabia, and we have the Saudis saying that we're going to declare war on Iran. And ladies and gentlemen, Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39 mentions these very nations. Ezekiel 38 and 39 mention nations who don't share a common border with Israel. But Psalm 83 mentions those attacking Arab nations that do share a common border with Israel. Psalm 83 mentions Arab nations who share that border with Israel, and one of them is Lebanon. They are located on Israel's northwest border. And of course, you know, reading out of Psalm 83 and verse number 7 very quickly, Psalm 83 and verse number 7 mentions the these attacking Arab armies. Psalm 83 7 mentions Gibal, that's modern day Lebanon. Gibal, Ammon, northern Jordan, Amalek. Amalek, by the way, was the grandson of Esau. Genesis chapter 36 and verse number 12. I love studying biblical uh, genealogies. Amalek was the grandson of Esau. Amalek, ladies and gentlemen, and I don't have a whole lot of time to develop this. You hear me talk about Esau and judgment on the Palestinians. Palestinians are descendants of Esau, Amalek. And we can trace the, the, the Edomite family tree through biblical times, through modern times, leading up to the people today who call themselves the Palestinians, who say we will kill the Jews and we will take their land. So we have Gibal, Lebanon. We have Ammon, northern Jordan. Amalek, today the Palestinians. And then we have Tyre, T-Y-R-E. That is southern Lebanon. That is where, ladies and gentlemen, Hezbollah is located today. Southern Lebanon, the headquarters of Hezbollah. By the way, Hezbollah is Arabic for army of God. The purpose for the creation of Hezbollah, ladies and gentlemen, by Iran is for the destruction of Israel. And Hezbollah's leader, Hassan Nasrallah, 
has run the group in hiding for fear of an Israeli assassination. He's a coward. Political leaders in Lebanon have been assassinated by Hezbollah operatives. It, it happens all the time over there. See, Israel seeks to assassinate the terrorist leaders that are over there. But Hezbollah likes to assassinate the political leaders there in Hezbollah that don't agree with their philosophy. As a matter of fact, just recently, Lebanese Prime Minister Harari just resigned the Lebanese government due to a, a plot to assassinate him. And where did he go? None other than Saudi Arabia. He's over there in Saudi Arabia where he is meeting with Saudi government officials to the ire of Iran and to the ire of Lebanon. Ladies and gentlemen, we see the prophetic scenario out in light of biblical prophecy. At first, Saudi Arabia will speak out against this attack on Israel, Ezekiel 38, 13, but we see a change of heart because we see in Psalm 83 and verse number 6, one of the Arab nations to attack. In Psalm 83, it says, the tabernacles of Edom, that's southern Jordan, and the Ishmaelites. Uh, I want to explain this to you. Ishmael fathered only one Arab nation. Genesis 17, 20, Genesis 25, 18. That's Arabia, Saudi Arabia. The Ishmaelites of Moab, that's central Jordan, and the Hagarenes, by the way, another proof that Ishmael didn't follow the Arab world. The Hagarenes will also attack Israel, probably during the first part of the tribulation period. The Hagarenes, well, they come from Hagar. Hagar was the mother of Ishmael, Genesis chapter number 16. What was Hagar's nationality? She was an Egyptian. Hagar, the Egyptian. Now listen, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not the sharpest knife in the jaw, okay? But I think it's impossible for a son to father his mother, okay? How can Ishmael father the Arab world if his mother is an Egyptian? And Egypt is mentioned early on in Genesis 10, 6. I've already said this to you. Mitzrayim, that is modern day Egypt. Egypt, already mentioned 500 years before Ishmael was even born in Genesis chapter number 16. So there's going to be a change of heart. The Ishmaelites, Saudi Arabia will change their minds. Join this Arab confederacy in Psalm 83 to attack the Jewish state of Israel. Psalm 83, 6. The Ishmaelites, Saudi Arabia today, that is the only Arab nation that Ishmael fathered. The only Arab nation. And I, again, I'd like you to study this on your own time. Ezekiel 38 and then the reverse. 83, Psalm, Daniel 11, 40 through 45, all record this attack on the Jewish state of Israel. God will intervene and destroy these attacking armies when they seek to destroy the Jews. And I believe with this rift going on now between Lebanon, Iran, and Saudi Arabia, Lebanon declaring war on Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia declaring war on Iran. Saudi Arabia giving Israel the green light to use its airspace in an event of an Israeli attack on Iran and their nuclear program. The seeds are being sown for this right now. And those seeds will sprout down the road, ladies and gentlemen, to its fruition. And what I mean by fruition, where it says in verse 8, in the latter years. In verse uh, number 16, the latter days. With this strife between Iran, Saudi Arabia, and Lebanon unfolded, major players, ladies and gentlemen, 
in Bible prophecy is showing that God's prophetic word is on course to being fulfilled. And we know that the next main event on God's calendar of events is the rapture of the church, which could even be today. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, today is the day of salvation because tomorrow could be too late. Today, call upon the name of the Lord, Romans 10, 13. Repent of your sins. That means change of heart, mind, and attitude toward your sin and toward God. By faith, ask the Lord Jesus to forgive you of your sins. To come into your heart to be your Lord and personal Savior. To change and transform your very life. Ask him to receive the free gift of eternal life. If you mean, mean business with the Lord, he will mean business with you. It's either heaven or it's hell. You know, the Bible says life is like a vapor. James 4, 14. It appears for a little while, then it vanishes away. You know, reading about the terrible plane crash yesterday involving uh, Roy Holiday. Uh, the man who threw a no-hitter in a perfect game when he was with the uh, Phillies died in a tragic plane crash at only 40 years old. One of the best pitchers in Major League Baseball. You just never know when your life is going to come to an end. And that's the reason why you need to be prepared. Trust in the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior so that you'll be ready for either one or two events, either death or the next main event, the rapture of the church. If you want to know more on how to do that, I'd love to talk with you. Contact me through Facebook Messenger, through my email, august.todayinbibleprophecy at gmail.com, or through my contact form on my website, todayinbibleprophecy.org. Don't forget, order my brand new book. We're taking pre-orders right now. Order my brand new book, Bible Eschatology, looking at geopolitical events in light of biblical prophecy, just like we did today. That's what you're going to get in this book. Now, the book is not in our store on our website as of yet, but you can still go to my website and order the book for $15 plus $3 shipping and handling. Go to the bottom of the webpage, todayinbibleprophecy.org, hit the PayPal button. All you got to do is put in Bible Prophecy Book. I know, how do you spell eschatology? Well, just put in Bible Prophecy Book. And then put the price in there, $15, and the shipping, $3. Once we receive your order, we'll hold on to that order. Once the book's coming from the publishers, which could be probably the end of the month, we will then make sure that book goes out to you just be, you know, in time before Christmas. I will personally autograph that book for you. So, my new book, I'm excited about it. I'm happy about it. Can't wait for it to get in your hands. Bible eschatology. Remember, eschatology is a theological word that means the doctrine of last things, the study of the end times. And so, I hope and pray that this book will be a blessing to you. We already got the manuscripts. They're going out to the publishers today. So we're really excited about that. You can also mail your order for this book to Today in Bible Prophecy Ministries, 55 Pleasant Street, Apartment 2, Lincoln, Rhode Island, 02865. And uh, that's all the time we have today. Tomorrow morning, we'll be back on at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So remember, keep looking up. Jesus is coming soon. And Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And we'll talk to you tomorrow, Lord willing. Have a great day. And God bless.